first game is actually a free game featuring one of Nintendo's most loved and adorable characters, Kirby. Super Kirby Clash is very simple. It's basically just a series of boss fights in different areas with minimal to no story. Every time you take down a boss, you unlock new gear, get new items thrown at you, and gain experience points. There's four different Kirby classes to choose from, each with their own movesets that do feel pretty different, and yeah, you basically just keep doing this. Boss fight after boss fight after boss fight. A little bit like a Kirby Monster Hunter game, where your real focus here is just a big fight with some friends. But I do miss the adventuring part of a game like Monster Hunter, or really even like Kirby. If you grind this game out and you patiently play the game in your free time whenever you have it, you might never have to spend any money on this game at all. But the in-game currency, gem apples, they will power you up super quickly. So I wouldn't say it's a pay to win game, I would say it's a pay if you're impatient game. Which is most free to play games, honestly. There's a lot of options when it comes to playing with people too. You can have four people play on the one Switch, or four people play locally on four different Switches, or of course, online with four players. Super Kirby Clash, I mean, it, again, it's free and it really is fun for what it is. It's fun enough. Well, if you really want to play a racing game on Switch, but you flat out refuse to pay for one, then Asphalt 9 is really your only option here. I usually don't vibe on racing games unless it's Mario Kart or something kart related. But dang it if this one doesn't at least look gorgeous. Both the car models and the tracks are really clean, vibrant, and pop really well. Just judging it purely on the visuals alone, I would never guess it was a free-to-play game. But then we start racing and uh... Yeah, no, it's still really good. I can't honestly fault this game at all. The tracks are varied with branching paths and routes. The racing is on point. This game is fun. It controls great. Spins slamming into other cars and watching them get demolished in slow-mo as a result is super satisfying. Building up your nitro bar and blasting past the other cars is great. It's a very arcadey feeling racing game if you can't tell by, you know, all of this that you're seeing on your screen right now. It just wants you to go fast and have fun. But you can also expect to uh, spend money on this game if you want to be even faster. You can either grind this game out real slowly, which probably means losing a lot, which is just frustrating enough to make you want to spend some cash on the game, unfortunately. But they do have a car that's themed as a pair of Joy-Cons, so it's at least a couple of brownie points. It's a good game. All right, yeah. Mm. I did promise you guys a couple of bad games on this list, but they are always fun to laugh at, I guess. The first one is Angry Bunnies. Uh, <laughs> As I loaded up this game for the very first time, I was immediately terrified by a few things. One, the music. supposed to be cute bunnies because these two on the left here are straight up giving me nightmares. Let's just move on. Alright, so you hit the play button on the uh, angry bunnies here and you get to select a level. All the other levels are of course grayed out. It takes you to the eShop if you try to click on one and yep, they're all, they're all two bucks, two bucks each if you want to Let's go ahead and pick the one level we can play and um, yep it, It's angry birds <laughs> I don't know, man. Aren't bunnies supposed to be cute? Oh, and there's no music while you play this game, by the way, no. It, it's just a really, really obnoxiously loud gust of wind sound effect. I played three levels into this disaster of a video game, and I got to this one where you had to knock the barrel down the slope, I guess? And I only had one bunny to do it with, and no matter how many times I shot that stupid ugly bunny at that barrel, it never moved, not even a, a tiny bit. It asked me if I wanted to buy more bunnies, and I think it wanted me to buy this big fat boy bunny, so I could actually, three levels in, and it's taking me to the eShop to get microtrans to spend Spend money to on the third level. That is literally pay to win. Three levels in. Yeah, no thanks. Don't think so. Time is worth something, and this game is not worth anyone's time. On my before mentioned previous 10 free games on Switch worth buying, the very first game I talked about on that video was Fortnite. I know, but 
I could not not mention it. Well, since then, a Fortnite clone has released called Realm Royale, and I actually prefer it. I'm not saying it's a better game, Fortnite fans watching this video, it's just my personal preference over the two. It's developed by Hi Res Studios, who have already made a bunch of free games on Switch, including ones in that last video, like Smite, and another game that I can't remember right now. And love or hate Hi Res's games, they all look incredible on Switch, and Realm Royale is no different. But speaking of differences, here is the biggest ones between this game and Fortnite. I would say the big one is abilities. Each character class starts with a different ability, like a dodge roll or invisibility, or even just being able to fly in short bursts. Probably my favorite one. Then as you play and explore, you'll find more abilities, each with a different ranking. Just like in games like Fortnite, they can be ranked from common to epic, and the better ranking the ability, the more effective or longer lasting it will be. There's also forges around the map, and I really like this element too. You collect little diamond gem things as you play, from chests, or enemies drop them when you kill them, if you can kill them. And you can take these diamond gem things to the forge, and you can craft things like better weapons, better items, health potions. Oh, and another big hilarious difference is when you die, you don't die immediately. For some reason, you get turned into a big cartoon chicken, <laughs> and <laughs> I mean, it's stupid, I know but I kind of love it. You're in this form for about 10 to 15 seconds, and if your opponent can't finish you off in that time, you get another chance. You come back to life and you can turn the tables. Oh, and there's no building? Uh, microtransactions are handled the same way as games like Fortnite, where you have a tier ranking thing, where as you level up, you get rewards, and if you want to get more rewards, you can pay for a battle pass. You never have to spend a dollar on these games. If you do, it doesn't help you. It just makes you look cooler get stupid dances, which I almost did, but I'm not going to because I don't need the gifts. DC Universe Online. I appreciate that this game is in the Switch's library. I like that there's an MMORPG that's not that bad on the Switch, but personally, I just can't get into this one. But it is a free game, and you might like it, so let's talk about it. In DC Universe Online, you decide what kind of hero you want to be, good or bad. Then you decide your superhero powers. Can you fly, run really fast, throw fire, or freeze people? This is by far the best part of the game, honestly. Picking and choosing your powers and mission Smashing your favorite DC heroes together into one brand new hybrid hero. Although to be honest, who doesn't pick the ability to fly? You are severely missing out if you pick anything else. I mean, it's the power to fly, man. Sadly, the coolest abilities like electricity is locked behind a paywall right from the start. You have to be a member, just like for pretty much all the story missions as well, which to me is kind of... eh. Having the story missions locked is, it's kind of weird, but okay, whatever. But starting the game and immediately seeing I'm missing out on cool stuff, yeah, that just bums me out. But anyway, once you're done making your character, you slap a cool name on it and give it an outfit. And hopefully later in the game you unlock better outfits because all the default ones you start with are terrible. Then the game begins and it's pretty much a typical MMORPG, grinding waves of bad guys and leveling yourself up to be the baddest or the goodest hero in the city. And from what I played, every mission was pretty much identical and repetitive. Go somewhere, kill some grunts, pick up something, come back and get a reward, and then go do it again somewhere else. It is fun to play with friends and all run around as goofy superheroes for sure, just absolutely do not play this game on your own. Okay, if I said with a really neutral face, the next game is Gems of War, would you assume I like this game or I'm gonna hate this game? Cause I actually really like this game. <laughs> it's a puzzle matching game, kind of like Candy Crush, but the hook is that it's also a card game of sorts. And you're just matching these gems to power up your cards so that you can attack your opponent and it works really well. Each of the cards you select to have on your side of the field have a different attribute, like water, fire, earth, etc. And when you match that type of gem, it fills your card with mana points. Fill the card with enough mana and you can activate its attack or ability. Like my warrior chick here can attack the enemies. But my favorite is this little chicken dragon. <laughs> he does a little baby fire attack when you power him up, but afterwards he can like evolve into a huge dragon and it changes his type and abilities. There's a lot of cool cards you can discover just like this one and mix and match which ones you want to use to your play style and level up in your desired mastery of the elements. I really do like it. <laughs> now I looked online at a 
few reviews for this game to see if anyone else was actually talking about it positively, a lot of people seem to think that it's very much pay to win. But if you're like me and just want to blast through the story and not take it too seriously because it's just a free puzzle matching game, I think it's a lot of fun. I pretty much refuse to spend money on any free video game though, so... Why do I feel like this next one is gonna have some huge cult fan following and uh, I'm just gonna get raked over the coals for this? Oni girl? Immediately as you load up the game, you see something that I can't even show on my PG family friendly channel. Sort of tells you what kind of game we're in for, so let me go ahead and blow that bad boy out. Oni girl is a MMORPG. I think, from what I managed to play. For some reason, everything looks like it's been super stretched out and I can't fix it. There's an option to switch between A graphics or B graphics, but I honestly can't tell a difference. Also, the game uses a cursor, like a PC game, which, okay. It's really friggin' hard to control it. Like, right here, I am trying so hard to hit that friggin' X up there. It's not like it's a small target, but oh my gosh, I just can't do it. It either overshoots or snaps back down when I hit the button. Oh my gosh, it's so frustrating. Why you have a cursor? The game plays both bad and fine. You press the right bumper to attack, you can switch between a few different weapons using the D-pad, and you get to be confused by everything plastered all over the screen while you're trying to play. The text is so small you can't read any of it anyway, so it's just there for funsies, I suppose. There's about 30 or 40 hours in the main story, so you can look forward to constant frame rate drops all the way down to about five. The game crashed on me about, pff, I don't know, four times. Okay, if I can dial it back for a second, and I'm being honest when I say this, this. As far as an MMORPG game goes, it's not bad. And maybe it might even be worth checking out on PC or somewhere else that's not the Switch. Unfortunately, this is just a terrible version. Finally, Hearthstone has arrived on Switch. Is something I really hope I can say one day because I love that game. Lightseekers is on Switch. It's another card game. It's also free. It's no Hearthstone, but it's actually really fun. Much of the game is as you would expect, with different deck types filled with spells and monsters. You know, your usual. The game itself is played a little differently to other card games though. Each turn you're given two action points. You can use one to to play a card or even use both your points at once to play a stronger card. Any action points you don't spend at the end of your turn result in you drawing a card, which might seem annoying. You've used your cards and now you can't even get any more, but most of the cards you play have lasting effects on the battlefield. Active cards get turned to the left on each turn and whatever number or symbol is in the top left corner once turned will have an effect, such as damage or healing. Now where do you spend money in this game? Well, to buy new cards, decks or booster packs, and I am really really okay with this method of microtransaction in games like this. In fact, I kind of love it. Reason being, when I was a little youngster, I was heavy into Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic. All my friends and I were, and every weekend, we'd drive 40 minutes down to the city of Adelaide, go to the card shop, and buy just so many booster packs and cards and decks. So I'm more than okay with an online card game utilizing the same system. And what gives Lightseekers an extra edge is that it's actually a real-life card game as well. In fact, Kim and I played it on the channel a couple years ago. So if you do have any real physical cards from a Lightseekers deck, you can actually use an app to scan them into your game and use them on your Switch. That's really cool, I like that. For some reason, sometimes I'm just a terrible human being. And in the last video I made like this, there was a little gag at the end where I said, as we all know, Nintendo just announced that Super Nintendo, GameCube games, and Game Boy Advance games are on the way to Switch or something like that. It was a stupid joke. However, now at least I was only like two thirds lying because since then, Super Nintendo games have actually dropped on the Switch. I know it's kind of a cop out to use this as one of the free games on the list, but I couldn't not mention it at the same time because well, for starters, the comment section wouldn't let me hear the end of it. But also, if it ain't the best free game on Switch, I don't know what is. I mean, you load it up and there's like 20 more free games inside it. Whatever, you got Link's Awakening, Kirby's Dreamland, Yoshi's Island 2, Star Fox, I'm pretty sure Super Metroid's in here. Yes, it is. That's amazing. Okay, this one is for sure my favorite game on this video, and it is one of the most quality free games I have ever played, period. Like, it's, it's literally all the way up there. It's called Dauntless, and you may have heard of this. 
<laughs> Depending on when I release this video, the game might even be out. I don't even have a release date yet. In fact, as of recording this, I am under such strict embargo, I am not allowed to even tell anyone I have the game. It feels weird, it feels like I shouldn't be even be talking about it right now. I mean, Kim can hear me, is that breaking embargo? But I've been playing this game all friggin' day. So Dauntless is made by Epic Games, the same creator of games like... Fortnite, but before, I know there might be a stigma there, but Dauntless is a whole nother thing. Actually, it's a Monster Hunter-like game. You start with your creator character, you can choose between a bunch of different weapon varieties like lance or dual wielding or a giant hammer or a sword or whatever it is you want to use. Go out into these levels, you take down these giant creatures, these monsters, these beasts, you harvest them for their pieces, you get loot from them, you also pick up other things in the world while you're there, and then once your mission is completed, you go back to your base and then you use all of that stuff to upgrade your items get better armor get better weapons and so on and of course you can battle these beasts with up to three other players four people total just like in monster hunter games the more difficult the beast the more people you're going to want to bring on the hunt with you and you're also going to make sure you prepare you learn about that creature before you go out and battle it and you equip yourself with the right items and abilities battling these giant creatures it isn't something that's over in just a couple minutes the fights last you really have to chip away and work down their health and it's really rewarding once you land that last hit and take it down And I want to clarify a couple things here for one. I ain't getting paid I am free to say whatever I want about this game In fact, I don't even have to say anything about this game I can be all like thanks Nintendo it wasn't for me. See you later But I really 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 wanted to talk about it because I really like it I think it looks really clean and crisp microtransactions are handled the way that I like with the battle pass everything is cosmetic. I think a lot of you guys are really gonna enjoy this one. If you're a fan of Monster Hunter, and Monster Hunter and Nintendo usually go hand in hand, it's just kind of nice to have this as an option as well. And then you can try this one out for free. Oh.